November. It's nearly the end of the year. We are in the funny season where nobody wants to work anymore. We all just want to have holidays and craft. Well, that privilege is not mine this year. I was on leave last year in December, so this year I'm working straight through December. I will only have leave again next year in March, April, there, sort of Easter, somewhere there. Yeah, so I'm staying at home. Akrayante's place at Kariki. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about Cable Me Cozy. Um, there's one tester, no, two testers still busy. Uh, Colin Fulyun is knitting the baby blanket size, so he has only started a week or so ago. And uh, Alta Ghost is still busy with hers. She's um, also working full time now, so crafting time has severely shrunk. It's very bad, it's really bad, yeah. Okay, so uh, Cable Me Cozy, the kits are available from a free yarn. And they are available at a 25% discount for the entire November up till the 2nd of December. Yes. And it's got free international shipping. So go and treat yourself to a kit for Christmas. It's on a 25% off and it's free shipping. You can't get it better than that. Many people say to me, um, if I make the blanket with this yarn, will it work? Will it work? Will it work? Now, let me first tell you, I will not knit a blanket of that size if you're making a big size with um, merino or acrylic yarn that's meant to imitate merino. Knitting, knitting stretches up easily. I don't like knitting blankets. <clears throat> with wool and it's very hard to wash them as well because they stretch so easily but with cotton it's a different story now because of the size of this blanket that's why I used the strands double on a six millimeter needle so that it goes faster because this thing is freaking huge and that gives it a nice weight it also gives it a nice density and a nice texture so it doesn't stretch and I can tell you that from experience because this is the second blanket that I've knitted with cables in a double strand of Moya um, Caress. Uh, the first one is on my Ravelry its name is the Erin Erin Caress blanket and this is the second one. So Caress is a very textured yarn. I've got some here. Oops, sorry. If I hold it close to the camera, you will see it's not a smooth yarn. It's a textured yarn. And that is what gives this blanket such a fantastic texture. Now, unfortunately, I started knitting, I had my test swatch done, so I used the inside and the outside of the sample, so, no, okay, wait, I can find the end here on the tail side, there. You can see that what you have is a cotton slub, a single, a single ply cotton, and then you have a, a double ply, two plies, but the single one has been applied very loosely with the other two so in that is what gives you this amazing texture there's nothing else like this it's divine so go buy yourself a kit 25% off free international shipping and you will battle to find something that will work as nicely as that it's just freaking amazing yes if you use another double knit cotton and a double strand on a six millimeter needle you will still get a very very nice blanket it's definitely not impossible you will get a very nice blanket i just love the texture of the caress that just adds that little wow factor to cable me cozy so the curl starts on the 7th of february 
um, as I said, there's just two testers still busy, but I'm not concerned about the pattern anymore. The pattern has been thoroughly tested. I would just like to show you the baby blanket size at some stage. I realized very late into the journey that I never got somebody to test at the baby blanket size. <laughs> White paper. No, no, sometimes. Okay, so let's talk about wacky weave and the belly. There you can see the yarn is in a crate there behind me on the wall. I am two thirds done with section eight and there are 12 sections in total so when section eight is done two-thirds of the blanket is done already so we are moving at a wicker pace but the testers are hot on my tail they're keeping me busy and i'm i'm very excited about it i'm really enjoying wacky weave for a change and you wouldn't believe it, but I've got another wacky weave sitting in my head already. So the moment that I'm finished with wacky weave and the belly, I will start working on the next one. And that is going to be something totally different, but it's wacky weave. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so if we continue at this rate we might be able to start wacky weave and the belly on the 7th of february as well i think that would be great to start a knitting girl and a crochet girl on the same day my birthday so um, that is what i'm aiming for but i'm not committing to it just yet because <laughs> you know life sometimes happens and things don't work out the way we planned and it's, it's best to be um, very adaptable and not rigid in, in your plans. Otherwise, it's difficult. Now, um, on Wacky Weave and the Belly, um, in my pattern file, I, I tell the story of my fascination with this geometrical, the strong geometrical patterns that you see in my Wacky Weave up till now. Um, when I was a child, we used to drive down to KZN and, uh, you know, children normally sleep in the car and my brother and my sister were much older than me. I was the unplanned accident child, so I had the whole car to myself, so I slept. But my father knew that when we got near the Ndebele villages on the side of the road, he had to wake me up so that I can see the houses. I absolutely loved the Ndebele houses they are so beautiful and and it still fascinates me to this day it is so beautiful to see and that is what gave me the inspiration for this particular blanket i i love the geometrical patterns that i've seen as a child i still do and um early this year when dries and i visited um, an old Ndebele village um, I just thought I have to make a blanket to honor this inspiration that I've had my entire life. And one of the big names in the Hindabele culture that brought the Hindabele type of art to the forefront is Esther Mashlangu. And Esther Mashlangu actually um, had the opportunity to work with BMW. And they designed a BMW car that was decorated in Hindabele patterns inside and outside. And that car is now on its way back to South Africa for a change for exhibition purposes. So um, it's, I didn't know the car was coming back to South Africa. Um, I found it out last week, Christelle from On Seacall sent me a, a message and said, did you see the cars coming back? So um, if the car's back in South Africa and it's anywhere close to me, I would really like to go and see what this car looks like. And, and I, <laughs> I'm willing to, to um, ask some people for special favors if it needs to be, but I want to go see that car. I want a photo of that car. Um, I'm going to post the links for you. Um, below the video the link to where you can read more about Esther she has since passed away and where you can see the car that Esther designed so that is where 
my my in the belly blanket is coming from it's simply inspired by the beautiful geometrical patterns I saw as a child on the Hindabelli houses. I'll post the links for you. All right. And then yesterday, I had a pattern on my website long ago, the one hang scarf. It was a boomerang scarf, very simple with a lace um, border on the one side. And somehow, I lost the pattern. And when I uh, gave my website the whole makeover, that web page disappeared along with a few others. I oh, know it was my doing. Oh, no, I know, I know, I um, know. I fucked it up. So the pattern was gone. And on Ravelry, there was only the link to the website page, which was no longer working. And... Um, if I download the photos from Ravelry, the photos, the resolution is very bad. But yesterday I actually took a screenshot and that worked better. So at least I got emails on a weekly basis of people asking me for the one hand scarf pattern. So eventually I found somebody that had a copy. One of my former testers kept a copy. I am so thankful. <laughs> So it's a very simple scarf pattern. It's five rows, only five. And um, you go until you've got no more yarn. That's nice. And with 100 grams, it makes a perfect scarf. It's a lovely scarf. If you go for 150, 200, you can make a nice shawl out of it. You just keep going until you've got no more yarn left. So I, post, I, I posted the pattern on my website again yesterday. You, sh you probably saw it on social media. And then somebody sent me a photo of his knitting. You know, Colin. Colin is supposed to be knitting on his baby blanket. But no, he started the scarf. But he is using two strands of sock yarn on bigger needles. And it looked so nice and squishy on the photo. And I thought, mm -hmm. I want to do that. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, um, today my children are coming for a long visit and it's now at the point in South Africa where I actually only crochet on Wacky Weave and the belly in the evening because it's just so hot in the, in during the day to sit with that blanket on my lap. That's why the photos of me on social media are crocheting the thing looks like I'm giving birth to the thing because it's all stuck between my legs and I'm sitting like an absolute slut. <laughs> But yeah, so I need I need a small project. I haven't got a small project at the moment to travel with me if we're going somewhere and I want to work in the car. Or if we have a slow Saturday social. Or like today where we're having people and I want to sit and craft in company, but I, I can't. I, I can't focus on the Wacky Weave pattern and having a decent conversation. So that was the perfect excuse. So I, I went into my stash. You see the, the, that cupboard there. It's actually a baby changing station. It used to be my daughter's baby changing station. But when they moved to Sweden, I bought it over from her because it's got these nice deep drawers. And that's now stash. Stash and tools are in there. So I thought by myself yesterday, I need special yarn. I just do. The week was long and hard and I need special yarn. And I've got yarn that I bought with a project in mind but since then the mind has changed and I no longer want to make that. So I've got 600 grams of this. So I thought, well, I'm going to take 200 grams of that. And I'm going to put this on the needles, double strand, and make myself this scarf. Now, this is um, Silky Milky Moon. I don't even know if she still sells yarn. I bought this a couple of years ago. But it's alpaca. It's pure, pure alpaca. Super fine alpaca. 
This is um, 500 meters on 100 grams, so it's it's a baby weight yarn. But let me tell you, to get those two hanks into these two balls was absolute, eh, eh, absolute torture. It took a lot of cursing and swearing. And I am a master with a swift and a woo winder. But yesterday, Phew. So what happened? Let's talk about how you store your fiber. My fiber, I haven't got anything else close to me now. My fiber is in Ziploc bags. All my yarn are in Ziploc bags. Why? Because it's a natural fiber, so crickets, fish moths, normal moths, mice, rodents, whatever, if they get into a house, they will eat the natural fiber. They won't necessarily eat the acrylic because it's plastic. It's not food. But um, this super fine alpaca is food. So all my yarn are in Ziploc bags. And I'm a firm believer, cotton is not a big issue. Cotton you can store in a hank or in a crack or in a ball. Cotton is easy. But animal fiber yarns, you've got to be careful. It's against, um, I can't say religion. <laughs> that will sound very bad. <laughs> uh, I don't believe storing natural fiber, animal fiber in balls. I prefer to store it in hanks. Why? Animal fiber has got these little scales on the side of the fiber and it grabs um, some more than others. Wool, not so much. Alpaca, definitely. Mohair, Oh my goodness. So you've got to be. So what happens if you store it in a ball? The ball is tightly wound and you squish it into a bag and the stash grows. So we press things down. So then you take the ball out and you think, oh, wonderful. It's balled. I've got a center pull and it's just <coughs> yarn buff. And you battle with that yarn buff. Why? Because the scales on the side of the fiber has grabbed because of the um, tightly packed and being squished. So I prefer to store it in hanks. Now, normally I don't squeeze all the air out of the Ziploc bag so that the hank doesn't get compacted. But we moved more than a year ago. So the wonderful people that packed up the house pushed out all the air and packed the yarn. And when I unpacked it, I didn't have that much space in my stash covered anymore. So I didn't inflate the bags again. I left them like that, squished flat. And then I still pushed it in. And the result was a pack of fiber that was very hard to ball. You would, I had it on the swift. And if I pull it, like five or six strands would be so attached to each other that I had to sit like this and loosen them. Before, I, it took me a couple of hours, I kid you not, to ball 200 grams of yarn. So think. How you store your yarn. Balls are not the best option, not at all. Hanks are better. Don't deflate the package, don't suck out all the air, and don't compress it into a drawer. Am I saying you should have less stash? Hell no. 
why we gotta do that okay so today I am now when I leave this video I am going to cast on the one hand scarf I might make it a bit bigger mine will be bigger because <clears throat> I'm gonna use 200 grams instead of just 100 and I'm gonna use a double strand and I'm still thinking about the needle size four and a half or a five possibly I think I think I think of five. I don't know I was watching see maybe a five then it's nice and drapey so yes <clears throat> this is what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna have good wine my friend came last night and she gave me a bottle of very nice wine my children are going to be here we're going to park in the bride room and have fun the whole day and make memories and i'm going to be knitting the one hang scarf in between and soon wacky weave in the belly will be finished i will see you on the third saturday of december <clears throat> what will that day be i have no idea i haven't even looked at december yet um then my husband says they're now gonna take off he's in durban he's on his way home um the third saturday in december is the 16th on the 16th of december that is the day of reconciliation in south africa i will do the december podcast on the 9th of december we have the in-person slow saturday social we have it at um, a very nice quaint little coffee shop here in Centurion called Pussy. Oh, <laughs> they've got the best um, spinach and feta quiche. Mm. Yeah, so if you want to join us, you need to contact me so that we can book space. Otherwise, we won't have enough space at our table. But you are so welcome to come and you're so welcome to bring a friend as well. Right, that's all for me, from me, I'll see you on the 16th of December again. And keep an eye on, so, oh, Black Friday, Black Friday is coming next weekend. Yeah, coming next Friday is Black Friday. And everything on my website, all my patterns on my website will be marked down 50% uh, off. The patterns on Ravelry will be marked down 50% off. And the Wonder Bags in my website shop will have a discount of 25%. Keep an eye on social media. Don't miss it. Right, I'll see you next, next month.